Welcome to basic setup of the Vista 20P Home Alarm System Part 8. Here I've listed the other videos in this series and easy to click on links to go and view them. The subject covered in this video will be programming security codes and authority levels. Since the installer is not normally responsible for programming user security codes, you won't find any information in the programming guide about it. The document you want is the installation and setup guide or the user's guide. Flipping through the installation guide, we find this one page labeled System Security Codes. A close look at this page will reveal a whole new vocabulary that we have to learn. Words such as installer code, system master code, user codes, authority levels, functions, security codes, user number, partitions, RF zone number, and finally paging. We really need to know two things about this list. What do these words mean? And how do they relate to each other? After a lot of head scratching on trying to figure out how to actually teach this, I finally decided I have to go outside of the box from your traditional learning method. So I brought in my crack security team. I'd like to introduce Connie, Sally, Lula, and Stephanie. They feel they can put all this information together in a manner that makes sense. So I'll turn the floor over to them. This is Stephanie. Stephanie installs alarm systems for a living. In every alarm panel she installs, she will always be user number one, and her default installer code will always be 4112. User number, installer code, alright, let's expand on that. Inside the alarm panel, there is a table that lists every single chicken that's allowed to gain access to the coop that's protected by the alarm. The Vista 20P can keep track of 49 chickens. If you remember from our last video, computers hate using letters, but they like using numbers. So Stephanie's name has been replaced with the user number 1. The second chicken will be user number 2, and so on. Since the whole point of security is knowing who you're talking to, each chicken is assigned a security code. Security code is just a fancy name for password. Well, that's right, since computers don't like letters, your password's going to be all numbers. Since the installer is always the first chicken to use the alarm, she's user number 1, and her default installer code or password starts out at 4112. Well, we've just earned two check marks on our homework assignment. User number and installer code are now water under the bridge. Now, Stephanie is really picky about her programming. To prevent others from changing her programming, she can change her own installer code password. That's called job security. Once the alarm panel is installed and programmed, it's time for the big boss to get involved. This would be Lula. She's queen of the coop. Her job will be to control the master code. Her user number is 2 and her default security code is 1234. As we update our user table, we need to be aware of a couple important rules. The first is users 1 and 2 can never be deleted. You always have to have an installer code for programming, and there must be a master code to control who can arm and disarm the alarm. Let me show you the easiest way to get in trouble. You're obviously going to change your master code. You may be thinking to yourself, since I have to keep both these users, I'll just make both their security codes the same. That way I only have to remember one password. This practice is absolutely not allowed. No matter how persuasive your argument with the alarm panel is, this is one stump the panel won't get off of. Not only do user 1 and 2's codes have to be different, but all 49 users have to have a different security code. Remember, the security code identifies the user to the alarm panel. This is important enough that the user's guide has dedicated two whole pages to allow you to properly document your user's codes. This column's your user number. Enter your chicken's name here. And the security code goes right here. This documentation is very important for the following reason. With the exception of the installer code, there is no way to get the alarm panel to tell you which code is assigned to which chicken. Not knowing which codes are already used will make assigning new users very difficult. Okay, back to Lula. Her default security code of 1234 works pretty good for her luggage, but for her coop's alarm system, she'll probably want to change the code. To do this, she has two choices. She can tell the installer to change her code, or she can change her own code. There's two interesting caveats between the installer and the master code user. The first is, even though the master code user has complete control of every chicken that enters and leaves the coop, she cannot change the installer's password. And the second one is, even though the installer programmed all the operational code into the alarm panel, the only time she can disarm a panel is if she armed it using her own code. This effectively removes her from the pool of users for the alarm system. 
Well, now that all the zones are programmed, Stephanie's work is done. She can leave. Time for a progress check on our homework. System master code out of the way. In addition to being in charge of all new users, the master code can also arm and disarm the alarm system. The good news is, if you have a small coop with only a few hens living in it, Lulu can just tell the other gals what her master code is. Then everyone can just use the same code to get in and out of the coop. At this point you have a perfectly usable alarm system. And the reason why this doesn't violate our password rule is that we never assign user numbers to Connie and Sally. So every time they arm or disarm the security system, the panel thinks that it's Lula. Of course, this practice will make most security specialists cringe. Okay, now that I've shown you the shortcut, let me show you the proper way of getting new hens into your coop. Every hen should be assigned a user number. And then every user number needs to have a different password. As Lula's coop grows in size, pretty soon there's going to be a waiting line in front of the single nest box. It's time for Lula to expand. She installed two nest boxes. To control who goes in and out of each nest box, a partition is created for each one. Partitions were covered in video number four. This diagram's getting to be pretty busy. In addition to all this stuff, Lula also has other responsibilities as a master code user. She performs all security functions, arm and disarm, add and remove system users, changes the system master code, reviews the event logs, Event logs keep track of things like who arms and disarms the system, or if you had an alarm event, etc. She sets the system clock, can program keyboard macros, essentially little teeny programs, uh, programs scheduled events. Events can be as simple as the system self-arming and disarming itself at preset times, or complicated like sending you a page if your kid hasn't gotten home from school and disarmed the system by a certain time. Or she can activate output devices. That's a whole nother video. Anyway, all these tasks are called functions. If that sounds familiar, it's because you've seen the word functions on our homework list. With all this work to do, Lula can become overwhelmed. So she can bring in two assistants. They're called Partition Masters. Partition Master 1 will be user 3, and Partition Master 2 will be user 33. Let me tell you why. Moving back to our user assignment form, we take a look at user 3. All the entries you see in brackets are default programming. So user 3 is assigned to Partition 1. And as a matter of fact, all users from 1 to 32 are defaulted to partition 1. And the authority level is 4. Hmm, what does that mean? Basically, authority means how many functions can the user perform? Level 0 is your standard user. The only thing they can do is arm and disarm the alarm. And later you'll even see we can control when they can do this. Level 1 is arm only. Let's say our coop is rich enough to afford to have a maid. I would assign the maid a user code of 1. When she's finished, she can arm the alarm, then leave, but she can't disarm it. Level 2 is guest. Let's say Lula wants to take her flock to a vacation in Hawaii. She can ask someone from the coop next door to come over and take care of the place. The guest is assigned their own security code, and they can arm and disarm it as long as you're gone. The guest cannot disarm the panel if it was armed by a normal user. Level 3. It's called duress. This is a standard user with one additional function. When the alarm is turned on or off, the central monitoring station is silently notified. So it's kind of like one of those switches in the bank where if you're being robbed, you press the switch and the robber doesn't know about it. Finally, the code we're looking for, that would be 4, Partition Master. This is a standard user who also has the power to assign and control users in their particular zone. So Connie, the Partition 1 Master, can control all the hands coming in and out of Nest Box 1. And likewise, Sally, Partition 2 Master, controls all the hens in Nest Box 2. User number 33 is the default Partition 2 Master. And users 33 through 49 are defaulted to Partition 2. Let's see, we've covered Partition Master code. And when we look at all four of the security codes we've talked about, that gives us the generic term security codes. And we've covered authority levels. Now that we have partitions and gatekeepers for those partitions, we can set up our partition queues. Both Lula and the partition masters can change which partition the hens can go into. So let's assign user 4 to nest box 1, then assign the rest of the girls to a box. So how do we go about changing a chicken's partition access level? Oh, that's easy. Just modify the user's attributes. Attributes define how the alarm panel is going to relate to the user. For example, attribute number 1 is authority level. Authority level is the ability to arm and disarm the panel. And it happens to be the last subject that we just talked about. 
Attribute number two is Access Group. This is used to determine at what time of the day the user can actually access the alarm panel and arm or disarm it. Attribute number three, Active Partition. This is how we assigned each hen to a specific nest box. We assigned them to a partition. Now, some of our more formal hens may want to use a key fob instead of a keypad to arm and disarm. This is where attribute number four comes in, RF zone number. This assigns the user's password to the key fob so the alarm panel knows who you are. And the last attribute is number five, open close paging. And you might want to sit down for this next statement. I'm about to show you how old this alarm panel really is. Some of us older folks recognize this. It's called a pager. When the user interfaces with the alarm system, notification is sent out to a pager. It's kind of like a tattletale system. Looking back, let's see, did we cover everything? Oh yes, our homework. RF zone numbers and paging. I'd like to extend a personal thanks to the girls for helping me to make this video. And we hope next time you look at this page, in its entirety, it'll make a lot more sense to you. The bad news is, I've run out of time. I'll have to do the hands-on in the next video. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.